landscape, 8,000 acres on the property there at Desert Mountain. They have six golf courses and the Cochise course, which was home to the tradition for many years. Jack Nicklaus, three times a winner there, and of course, the designer of all six of the golf courses at Desert Mountain. Back inside the studios of On the Range, Gary Williams, great to have Grant Wade here. Thank and you. won the 1993 Kemper Open. Now you've become a top swing instructor. It's interesting transition. We don't see guys, many guys who win on the PGA Tour. <clears throat> Your brother Butch, uh, <laughs> a winner on the PGA Tour, uh, make the transition. For you, we're going to get some thoughts with you and Billy, the idea of making that transition. But let's talk about some of the players in this field. Now, you're a tall guy, very strapping guy. Willie Wood is only 5'7", 145 pounds, two-time winner this year. If you go back to his college years, he was a wonder boy, great college player, a lot of expect, a lot expected of him. He's made just under a million dollars this year. Now, for somebody 5'7", 145, when you look at his golf swing, where does the effectiveness come from? Well, first off, Willie, um, right now, he's trying to strengthen his grip a little bit, and he's trying to have um, cut the ball. So, you know, if I was a tournament player, no matter what, as Billy said earlier, you have to have some predictable pattern in order to play golf at the highest level. You have to know where to aim. So um, he's trying to start the ball to the left, so we know that he's working on having his club face a little left at impact and then trying to create some path a little more to the left of that to curve the ball back. So the, the question is, what is he doing here in order to create this, this path over to the left? Well, one of the things he's doing is, you can see, he's got a glove in his hand, and he's going to put that underneath his left uh, shoulder, a uh, left armpit, and uh, it goes right there. So the idea being, um, that he's trying to get his arms to go around with his body, and you can see that he's trying to aim a little bit left as well, that helps him and keep his arms going with his body as his body moves forward and continues to rotate on, th on the through side. All of those things are helping him produce a feel that he's going to use when he goes on the golf course to uh, create this leftward path uh, to help cur curve the ball back to the right. So um, dynamically, he has to be very aggressive, um, and at his height, that's a, that's a great thing. You know, you brought up something very interesting, Grant. He's trying to fade the ball, but he's strengthened his grip. And uh, the history of the game tells us that a lot of the great faders of the ball, oddly enough, had stronger grips and maybe uh, shut faces at the top. Trevino comes to mind. Bruce Litsky comes to mind. And so sometimes the game is a little bit of an opposite. And if your club face feels shut or closed, it's easier to have a sensation of holding on. Tom Lehman, who we did in earlier, he draws the ball from that position, but he very rarely hooks it. So it's interesting that Willie would uh, strengthen his grip to try to cut it, but I think you can hit a harder fade with a stronger grip than if you have a weak grip. Well, no question. You really have to stay aggressive. So uh, that's, and that's a good thing for Willie with his stature. All right, and you speaking of stature, stature in the game uh, for Fred Funk. He's one of the best players on the Champions Tour. But he also, a diminutive guy, and has always been, you go back to his prime on the PGA Tour, one of the straightest hitters of the golf ball. And if you look at him, Grant, when you look at his efficiency, where does he get it from? Well, one of the things uh, earlier in the year that uh, Fred has been battling is he, he injured his uh, left thumb, and uh, he started to, he was afraid to take a divot so, uh, because of the stress on that thumb. So he started to move his upper body, um, not intentionally, too far to the right. Now, you heard him earlier with uh, Billy Kratzer saying that he's trying to stay centered. Now, I, I really like that. So if he stays centered, he feels like if he gets to the top, he can be real aggressive again with his rotation. So as his weight's moving forward, he's trying to, to rotate, move his weight forward, and, and he calls it uh, get to the top, turn and burn. And um, he's not a position-orientated guy, um, and which is amazing to watch because his swing here is so orthodox looking. Um, so when he gets to the top, he's uh, centered, trying to stay centered, which means that his left shoulder from where it is at address uh, he moves that to the center of his stance. So that's a centered shoulder turn. If he goes past that, he's now moved too far to the right. Um, so that, again, allows for that aggressiveness. And um, he, over his career, uh, you could arguably say he's probably been the straightest hitter in the history of the PGA Tour. Boy, I, I, I think he and Calvin Pete, I bet statistically, are the two straightest hitters. It's interesting to me is that he rotates his body through the ball much more than Willie Wood did. Yet they're both trying to accomplish similar things. And Freddie also is kind of a borderline shut, shut face player also. And in his case, he, he probably wards off the club 
releasing too soon with his body rotation, but he has been a straight driver. I know another one of his keys, uh, Grant, is he likes to stay in his spine angle, and, and I guess he's trying to swing more around a fixed axis at this point, yeah. which he does. He, he, he absolutely does, but I would say of all the really, really good players, I don't think Freddie is a real technician. I think he's a player. I think he knows his strengths, his weaknesses, and he's learned to play golf at a high level without being a long hitter. Well, and he's he's got a predictable ball flight pattern again. Yes, you know, so <laughs> straight, straight, <laughs> very straight. So, he, uh, if you go back, guys, driving accuracy percentage, the stat started to be accumulated in 1980. Uh, and you mentioned Calvin Pete, Calvin Pete, and Mike Reed, who uh, they call yeah, radar. Uh, they yeah. dominated that. Then we're stat. swing to Fred Funk. Yes, very much through the 1980s into the 90s, and then of course Fred took over. All right, when we come back, Grant's going to stay with us. We'll break down one of the sweetest swings in golf, Fred Couples. It's been two months since his last start. We'll show you how Boom Boom is working his way back from injury. One of the most envied swings to one of the most unique. Our experts will tell you why Kenny Perry's swing works and where he gets his power from. It's great to have you with us on the eve of another big week around the world in golf right here on the range. Welcome back on the range. There's Roger Chapman. He has two top tens this year. There are two wins. The senior PGA and the U.S. Senior Open. He's third in the Schwab Cup standings, 657 points behind Bernhard Langer. And there are a couple things that would have to happen in order for him to win the Schwab Cup. Welcome back to Inside the Studios of On the Range. Gary Williams, great to have Grant Wade here. And as always, Billy Harmon. And gentlemen, as you look at uh, some of the unique swings in the game of golf, and this is somebody in Kenny Perry who almost won a major championship, the Masters, just a couple of years ago. He's always been one of the longest hitters on the PGA Tour and certainly now on the Champions Tour. And if you look at his swing, it's unique. The power. Grant, where does it come from? Well, first off, um, with the driver, he's got a, a, a beautiful uh, uh, alignment at impact. He hits up on his driver, which is um, optimal for distance, and he tends to swing outward. So he's hitting a high draw. Now, as equipment have changed over the years, it's actually gone towards his game, where a high draw or launching ball higher with less spin has been a real advantage. And uh, when I first came on tour, I played with him a few times, and um, he was a very good driver of the ball. But as he got older, he just kept getting longer and longer as equipment changed, and we started to realize that he actually was the, the model in lots of ways for impact with the driver. You know, uh, he has an interesting swing. Uh, one of the things I love about the players on the Champions Tour, my dad used to say the Hall of Fame is filled with funny swings. And both he and Freddie, who we're going to talk about, are they, uh, I don't know how to say it other than that they turn late on the backswing. They tend to let the club swing up at the start with their body not doing a lot, and then they do most of their turn towards the end of their backswing. So I think they're taking care of the up part first and the around part second. And that gets them in a pretty good position on the downswing, don't you think, Grant? Well, no question. You know, there is a, a relationship there between the turn of your body and the, and the way your arms are elevating on the backswing. So he just does it in a little bit of an awkward order when you look at it, where the arms go first, then the turn. But ultimately, that turn gets him back, his arms back down onto the inside so he can swing slightly up and out to the right through impact. So it's unusual, but it's very effective. Well, a lot of people swung like that uh, in yesteryear where they took the club out and they, when they weight transitioned forward on the downswing, it looped back in on plane. It appeared to have a big loop in it, but really all they were doing was slotting it on the downswing. And guys as talented as Kenny and, and Fred Couples were able to do it every time. This question is a little bit off the range, but it's interesting you note that he really took advantage of technology going in the direction it went. Can you think of anybody who is adversely affected by technology going in the direction it's gone? Well, you know, I would say, now, these are still great players, but a guy like Paul Azinger, for example, who tended to hit the ball lower and cut the ball. Now, you know, in today's golf ball, they started to uh, produce balls that would spin less and less. So that, that lower ball flight couldn't stay in the air unless you had an extreme amount of power and speed in it, and so gravity would pull that to the ground because spin's not keeping it there. So... Um, you know, so the higher and the more uh, speed and the higher draws you hit, they start to get more of an advantage. All right, somebody who can always hit it high and still does, but he hits it in this direction, and that is for a couple. Most importantly, it's, just, it's good to see that he's healthy enough to compete. It's been a while, and uh, he's still had a good year. He has two wins. He won the senior British. Uh, and Billy Harmon, when you look at his swing, what, what do you admire the most about this? 
Well, <laughs> all the things he can do, I can't do. <laughs> he is so physically gifted, but I think he's the king of the late turner. Uh, his first move on the backswing, the club and the arms move kind of up and out, and then he does a lot of turning at the end. Uh, I guess when I look at his swing, it almost appears to me that his downswing is propelled only by gravity. It just seems like the club and the arms are dropping as the body is rotating. Uh, Grant, you've played with him a lot, and you've played with all the great players in the world. I don't know really if there's ever been a guy who swung the club with the, apparent, the appearance of less effort than Fred Couples. Well, and, and that's what's so pleasing to the eye about uh, Freddie. You, you know, we're not going to pull his pa uh, swing apart and look at it as a position-orientated swing. He's he's using the, the wonderful gift of rhythm that he's got, and he's not afraid of making a big uh, turn, full turn. So he lifts his arms up, makes that big turn, kind of slides his hips a little bit, gets his weight going forward, drops his arms to the inside, and then just hammers it. But it doesn't look like that just because of, of that, that gift of rhythm. But... What's interesting is he's doing that, and he's cutting the ball, and we have Kenny Perry doing a, a very similar backspin drawing the ball. Also interesting, I think Freddie, uh, even years ago when he came on tour, he played the ball so far up in his stance and his center, let's say his spine would be almost in front of the ball at, at address. He was one of the few guys that kind of rotated without a lot of weight shift in, the, let's say, the modern-day era. And in many cases, a lot of the players today are going back to that more centered swing. And you don't see people moving off the ball nearly as, as much as we did in the 70s and 80s. There's still such a fascination because uh, it's so syrupy to look at. And it's interesting to note that someone like Nicholas Colsarts, that the American golf fan is just seeing really uh, a reasonable amount, that the subtlety, but all the speed, where is it coming from? And of course, Fred has had that for so very long. Now, it's interesting, Grant, to have you here because, you know, when you think of the Harmon family, you know, we mentioned Butch, he won on the PGA Tour and obviously is now one of the premier instructors in the world. Claude, your dad, didn't play much competitive golf before he would go to Augusta and compete in the Masters. He was given lessons all winter long, and he won the 1948 Masters. I know you're fascinated by the transition he's made in his career. Well, I've always felt that the, the, the untapped resource in golf today are the former players. But players by nature have to be a little self-centered and a little selfish. To be a teacher, you have to be a giver. Not many players can make that transition from being a player and just caring about your own game to now trying to impart your knowledge and actually care about another golfer or another human being really is what you're doing. Have you found that to be a struggle or is it just uh, natural for you to want to do this? Well, instruction is combines probably the, the two things I love to do most, which is play golf and then think about golf. <laughs> so, you know, I used to, when I played the tour for, for better or for worse, I used to look at what the other players were doing, try and figure out, you know, what's interesting about their swings and you know if I was going to make changes to them what would I do and how to be more efficient it, it, I've got a curious brain that, and at times it's very hard for me to shut off so the transition for me um, the, the most difficult part is of course is now I, I have to think about more more people than my own golf game so I go to bed at night and all of a sudden I'm I can drifting off to sleep and I'm thinking about the players what I just said to them that day how can I help them get better um, and I'm not thinking them too much about myself. You brought up a very interesting point. Teachers, if I go to the range of my club at Toscana, regardless if I'm giving this person a lesson or not, or will ever teach them, every golf swing I've ever looked at, I say to myself, what would I say to that person if they asked me for advice? So you do have that teacher chip in there if you're thinking that way. Yes, well, like I said, for better or for worse, when I was playing, it may not have been the best thing, but it's going to help you as a teacher, I can tell you that much. Yes, that's right. Well, Grant, for people who want to find out more about your instruction, weightmayogolf.com. Tell us exactly, I mean, you'll work with all skill levels, correct? Well, of course, you know, this, the, the game of golf is really is to be enjoyed by everyone, and that's, that's our goal. Uh, Joe Mayo, who is my teaching partner, is where Wake Mayo is... Uh, that's our goal is to is to provide informed choices, give information, use of science, but also understand that we're playing this game. How do you apply that science of what's going on in, in a meaningful way? One to get better, but two for for people to enjoy the game. You know, people don't want to go out there and be frustrated every day. They want to go out there and have some fun. So. Well, Billy says, I've got a very untrained eye. I saw you in 93 in Greensboro, and I said, this guy's going to be really good, and you won that year. It's been great having you here. Look forward to having you back. Yeah, I look forward to it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Very Thank good. You.